All right, today we're talking about the optional Ligum family of grinders. We have the Ligum Mini, the P64, and the P100. And I'm just gonna go over each of them and talk about what I like and don't like about them, as well as some several use cases that I use each of these grinders for, as well as maybe a reason why you might want to consider getting all three of them. So let's start off with the Ligum Mini. So this is a conical, Burr grinder. Essentially, it is like a hand grinder with a motorizer on it, and it uses these 48 millimeter conical burrs that I absolutely love. In my opinion, the Lagum Mini is kind of just one of the most convenient grinders you can have uh, around. I mean, just, just look at how small this grinder is. It is insanely small, and uh, I've actually been using it for a few different things. I've been using it for travel, bringing it around to different places. It offers just such lovely performance considering uh, the size of it. So there are two different burr sets that you can stick in this grinder. You can stick the 48 millimeter obsidian burrs, as well as my actual favorite small conical right now, is the 48 millimeter moonshine burrs. They're the same as the obsidian, uh, but they don't have the coating on them. And we end up getting a very similar cup, but with less fines in it, which then, in my opinion, results in a slightly clearer cup. Uh, to me, this is just such a great grinder if you just don't have a good grinder and you want something that is just super easy to use and gives you just, in my opinion, just right to the verge of diminishing returns, at least when it comes to uh, performance. There are a lot of things to note about this grinder. Going over this design, and of course I owe you guys a full review of this grinder, we're getting there. Uh, this grinder has a magnetic lid here, a little guard here, and then your burrs are right down there. And you adjust the grind size by, well, going left and right, and you fully unscrew and you'll get access to the burrs. In fact, you'll see this design language uh, in the bigger grinders. I actually think that's awesome that the design language is the same across the whole family. But uh, this is how it works. We just put the beans in here and we turn the grinder on. Your grounds kind of just go into this magnetic catch cup here, but you grind the coffee, goes in there. I will say that it's Definitely on the, the louder side of things, uh, it is a small screechy conical, so that's what's going to happen there. And what's just awesome about this is actually the flavor profile for the money. Um, I will say that in espresso with the obsidian burrs, I actually really think they're amazing. Uh, to me, they're that much more, I would say, traditional style of espresso, very similar to something like the Niche Zero. The biggest difference between the Obsidian and the Niche Zero are really in how those shots finish to me. I often find the Obsidian burrs to actually finish a little bit smoother, less harsh than the Niche Zero, but if you pull very similar styles of shots, and these will benefit from those longer, more, I would say, traditional styles of shots, the Obsidian to me actually I like it better than the niche. And what's more awesome about this is that when you go coarser, so when you actually go do things like pour over, uh, like I said, I've been using this as a travel grinder. I use this as that travel pour over grinder. I don't really use it much for uh, espresso when I bring it around to places. And that's just because these smaller con conicals, especially things very similar to something like the Commandant C40 and uh, all of that, they produce a really lovely cup for pour over, for our filter and coarser styles of brew, we actually can get really great acidity. And of course, there's definitely gonna be some sort of rounding that occurs. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be searingly clear like you can get in these bigger flats, but you will be able to get a very good picture of the coffee that you are brewing. And that's further enhanced with something like the moonshine burrs. You actually get a fairly clear cup with the moonshine burrs. I find the moonshine to be clearer than the obsidian and definitely allows me to have a better experience with some of these lighter roast coffees, uh, but I do want to note that because these burrs are not coated, they create less fines, and that means that you have to actually grind a bit finer to compensate. And now let's kind of go into, I'd say, the downsides of the Mini, I'm kind of alluding to it, to it already, is that because this grinder is so small, it doesn't use a very high powered motor. And you, what ends up happening is uh, you can end up actually just breaking this grinder if you push it too, too hard. And that's still where something like the Niche uh, comes in a little bit more handy is you're getting very similar cups to the Mini and the Niche. I think the Mini tastes a little bit better, but there is definitely a, a risk of you 
destroying your grinder. I have actually uh, gone through one lag of mini already, uh, uh, but I, to be fair, I was uh, grinding wheat grass, but now I believe they fixed a lot of these problems. Uh, and there are newer generations of the lag of mini. So I had the original one from the launch uh, that I bought and um, it actually came with a power supply that would stall when I used the moonshine burrs. And what ended up happening uh, was that they had a newer power supply that fixed the stalling issue. I got the newer power supply in and uh, I was able to grind my light roast espresso using the moonshine burrs, but definitely uh, stressing that original mini caused it to kind of have some problems and uh, that one broke and I picked up a newer one. The newer one here actually has some different design elements to it. I know a lot of people have complained about this top, you know, is actually this grind size uh, adjuster. We go left and right here, but the problem is, is that they got rid of the numbers on this. So on the original Lago Mini, we have numbers, you know, we have numbers. But apparently, according to Option O, there were enough of y'all in the community who were complaining that you didn't know what the numbers meant. So uh, they decided to get rid of the numbers, it seems. And uh, we end up with, with this situation. Uh, I don't really think it matters too, too much. I kind of, what I do is I actually just count the rings down here, the amount of uh, rings exposed here for the screwing on and off of the grind size adjuster and that kind of lets me understand the grind size But I you know numbers are helpful at times. So that's something you have to really uh, Keep in mind with this is that this is a very glass cannon Coffee grinder is it's very very performance focused and and it's awesome when you consider such a such a small package But you do run the risk of if you are using some of those ultra light roasted coffees and you're using something like the moonshine burrs and you're grinding espresso all the time, you're gonna run the risk of potentially breaking this grinder. But I do want to assure you all that Option O has awesome customer service. So let me grind some coffee and I'll show you kind of just how, how loud it is. Um, basically, this grinder does have that sort of screechy noise of the smaller conicals. And I will note that in espresso, it does take a while to grind, uh, almost 45 seconds to, to a minute, depending on obviously how fine you're grinding things. And if you end up actually stalling the grinder, the grinder will just stop and then start again and stop and start again. But with the new power supply, I really don't have any problems uh, with stalling at all. I'll just do some like 10 gram demonstrations here. We'll have it at a filter and then we'll have it as espresso. I actually do really like that this lid is magnetic. What I will say is that retention of this grinder is, is actually pretty good, especially if you start, you know, you can actually get a puffer set up for this and you can get the grounds to be out there, but it is definitely screechy. Can't really hot start this grinder. It's gonna pop from everywhere. So uh, that is why you do sometimes need to be careful of your feed rate of how light your beans are and of course uh, how finely you're grinding but I think for most folks now with all of the new adjustments that Optiono has done you're generally okay so I'm putting in 10 grams and I'm just at my pour over grind size setting this is about how loud and long it takes uh, to grind so there's a power button on the side here that you press to turn on Yeah, I mean, it's very straightforward. Um, we definitely get some static here and I don't really RDT with this grinder. So I, I think it's honestly probably completely fine. Uh, but the grounds come into this catch cup. This catch up is pretty good at actually reducing retention in here. You kind of just knock it out there. And I like that it's actually uh, magnetic. Now to actually adjust the grind size and make it into espresso, I just go right a few times. And I basically just close this uh, gap that I see here. So it is um, definitely a little bit frustrating now that there aren't numbers on this thing. 10 grams in here. This will take a fair bit of time. I mean, if you're doing your 18 gram dose, definitely in that 45 to uh, one minute range, depending on coffee. That's about how long it takes. And then what I do is uh, sometimes there's some beans that get uh, stuck up in there. 
Uh, usually I'll just knock it in. Uh, and and I'll, honestly, a lot of the times I don't actually use the little finger guard in here anyway. I had an espresso grind, it does take a fair bit to grind. But yeah, overall, this is a really amazing package. Uh, I really enjoy this grinder just because it's so convenient to bring around. If I'm trying to serve coffee to people, if I'm trying to say go places and you know bring some of these drippers around, go traveling, or just have a, a really small grinder that is can just plug in pretty much anywhere. Um, this is the grinder to pick. I actually just love the coffee coming out of it. It really is much more approachable than, than these. Of course, depends on what birth set you're using, but you can really confidently use this grinder, I would say, now. And if anything goes wrong, you have the support of Option O, which is uh, awesome. But I would highly recommend you get this grinder with the Moonshine Burrs. Uh, personally, for me, I think it just offers that bump in clarity that, uh, honestly can put it up there with some of these flats that we taste, but the biggest difference between uh, these conicals and these flats are, are definitely gonna be in that finish and when you go push faster flow rate styles of shots or even pours, uh, you might notice some differences there. But I think for so many people, this is gonna be, like you're hit, gonna hit diminishing returns with this setup here. And if you are doing espresso, you just really want to be careful of what you're trying to do uh, there. And personally speaking, if you are pushing those super syrupy styles of shots, you're probably using some darker roast coffees anyway. And if you're doing some of these light roast coffees, this is actually a grinder, you know, it's like the niche, it does benefit from uh, some of these turbo styles of shots. But with these moonshines, it's definitely more comparable and it, it's way clearer to me than the niches and it's just like you get a lot of capability in a package this small this easy to bring around there are some quirks with it now with this as well as just with it takes a long time to grind at espresso size uh, and sometimes the grounds get stuck up here but overall i mean this is what i recommend to so many people and i love this grinder i just like that i can put it in my backpack bring it to places brew some coffee and if i'm using the moonshine burrs uh it it lets me really present coffees to people especially if i'm doing some sort of like hosting a party or something and, and doing serving some coffee there this is that grinder that i bring with me and uh it's super awesome i really really like this grinder so that's the lag of mini Let's move on to the P64. Okay, P64. This is the most straightforward 64 millimeter flat burr grinder on the market right now. There are multiple versions, as we see with all of these Option O grinders, is there are already now, there's like a third version of this grinder now coming out where they've adjusted the shoot design as well as they've adjusted the way the burrs are removed. I actually kind of dislike the new method of removing the burrs. It's not as easy as this one is. But what's awesome about the P64 is that it's a very frictionless experience. So what I mean by that is you don't have to do anything to this grinder out of the box. Uh, I don't have to modify things. I don't have to worry about the motor stalling. I don't have to worry about any of these things in comparison to other 64 millimeter flats on the market right now. And that's because uh, this is definitely one of the more expensive flats on the market that use these 64 millimeter burrs. So the specific burrs I have in this P64 are the 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs. And those are just searingly clear. They're very, very clear burrs. You can stick those same exact burrs in other grinders that are a half or even a third of the price, which is, you know, if you were chasing performance, you would, if you're thinking that way, that's completely fine. And you know, you can play with RPM adjustments with this grinder and you can technically change the flavors uh, in cup, even using the same burr set. But for most folks, I think what is going to be most attractive about the P64 is the actual quality of life. I mean, just using this thing is such a joy. Yeah, this grinder is insanely straightforward to use. So uh, if we go to this side here, we have the RPM adjustment here. And if I turn the grinder on, you can see that I can adjust the RPMs. So you can play around with stuff like that. And then over here is our power button. And then up here, I think, is what makes this grinder the most interesting, which is easy access to burrs. Uh, this has slightly changed with newer iterations of the P64, but basically you just unscrew things all the way to the left, same thing with these. And you get very easy access to the burrs. The burrs in here are the 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs. And the thing is, is like, it's so straightforward. I mean, this grinder doesn't have any quirks to it. It doesn't require any modifications. Um, it just works out of the box. And, and that's why there is this premium added to this, is I think most folks, if you are chasing 
flavors, you know, if you want the same taste profile of say 64 millimeter SSP multi-purpose spares, you can buy grinders that are half the price, a third of the price, and it'll get you the same type of flavor. But this workflow here and just living with a grinder like this is definitely, I would say, unparalleled. Um, and that's why it's very expensive. But for those of you who wanted to know, uh, this is the Optional Catch Cup. It is awesome. And a lot of people take this catch cup and they actually try sticking it into the portafilter hooks. So as you see here, oh, wait a second, it's wobbly. But what you actually do is you, you, you stick it up here and that's how it is. Exact same thing, I'm gonna put the coffee in. And these are 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs, those SSP multi-purpose burrs. And I know some of you guys with DF64s, uh, y'all know that this is a very screechy burr set. I think this has done a really great job at actually making uh, that fairly, fairly quiet. And this isn't a super you know, representative test uh, as we can adjust the RPMs and everything, uh, but I'm just gonna set this guy to, I would say four. They fix the way the numbers, you know, higher number equals higher RPM. I really wish they actually would tell you what those RPMs are. But yeah, uh, you do need a RDT with this grinder. As is, very quiet. Really not much screeching like you would get with other grinders using the exact same burrs. That's super quiet. So I like to actually run these grinders when I'm actually adjusting grind size there. Uh, but we'll put 10 grinders in. So that was actually super quiet. I, I was like, I, uh, I forgot I had this set on espresso and I was pulling some MP shots. Uh, but yeah, that's insanely quiet uh, considering these are MPs and MPs in a DF64 are very, very loud. Do the exact same thing. It's easy to use. And, and that's just the awesome thing about the P64 is it's just like, that's it right there. RDT, put the beans in, grind and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about crazy stuff happening to the shoot, although uh, this will matter to, to an extent as you can get those poop logs that come out of here if you're using some really dark stuff, uh, as I demonstrated using Pete's Major Ds. But uh, with most cases, this is gonna be just so much easier to live with. I mean, if I wanted just a really, really great grinder to play around with 64 millimeter burrs, I think the P64 is such a great option. And changing the burrs in this grinder is actually very, very straightforward. I mean, you just unscrew everything, but I do want to note with the newer version of the P64, they did add two uh, screws and kind of a magnet setup in there. Uh, it, I don't think it makes it too difficult to actually um, get to the burrs and all of that, but it is now not toolless and that's kind of annoying, but you don't have to worry about the burr carriers being like milled weirdly or, or anything like that. Uh, what's actually going to matter is when you're aligning is it's gonna be those burrs themselves, you know, maybe get a Reynolds wrap sponsorship depending on uh, what burr set you use. So I do want to note that Optino is also coming out with the new Lab Suite burrs, also made by SSP, not to be confused by the cast Lab Suite burrs and they're two versions of the cast lab seat burrs. So anyway, that's happening. Um, but yeah, they did, they made some adjustments to the newer version of this. I think those are shipping out this month. And what's awesome is that they actually show you in the factory of how much effort people are putting in uh, to actually making sure this grinder is built really well, aligned really well. And I would really argue that out of the box, man, the alignment's pretty good out of these grinders now, and you don't have to touch anything, and you shouldn't have to touch anything for two grand. So that's kind of the thing with this grinder is, is really just gonna be that easy experience, that high quality of life, we love that, especially with 64 millimeter flats. And this is going to give you just a really amazing experience. Now, I don't really talk much about taste here as I have a video on SSP burrs, on all those 64 millimeter burrs. I'm gonna get around to updating that. I mean, there's so many 64 millimeter bursts now to try since I made that last video. And flavor profiles out of this grinder are going to drastically uh, depend on which burr set you put in. For me, if we are looking at these two right now, we ignore this guy. I actually think the obsidian burrs paired with a 64 millimeter SSP multi-purpose burrs are a crazy good contrasting combo and 
I really like contrasting experiences in coffees. And uh, if you were using Moonshine in the Mini, I think maybe a fun contrasting experience would be HUs or Cast Lab Suite. Uh, but I think cool stuff is Obsidian here for very traditional chocolatey styles of shots. And then MPs in here and you get such a, a crazy clear searing acidity uh, that, that's gonna be super different than this. If you were to only pick one burst set, I would actually pick the Cast Lab Sweepers. I think the Cast Lab Sweepers, such a great all-rounder. Uh, they provide you a really great amount of clarity, acidity, body. It's definitely not as, I would say, sharp and layered as MPs are, but everything else is just, I would say, much more enjoyable uh, in cup if you didn't like those super acidic, high clarity presentation that you get out of MPs. All right, now let's move on to the big boy here, the P100. Uh, as we see, we have a massive size difference between all these different grinders. And uh, the reason why this is the biggest one is that it uses 98 millimeter flats. So it has the largest burrs. This is just an awesome grinder. And to me, it's still the best workflow when it comes to a 98 millimeter flat. And it brings in so many of these quality of life things. I kind of see this across uh, the designs of here is that there's this huge focus on actually making your experience of making coffee just a lot easier. And that's just what we see here is in this grinder, we have so many just nice little details that just make your life very easy uh, when you're using this grinder. For one, it's got a beefy motor, so you don't have to worry about stalling. Two, it's got this actual grind knocker here. And three, it's got this really awesome auto purge function where it will ramp the RPMs up. And like these, it's very easy to access the burst, just unscrew everything. I don't know if they're gonna add those magnets in here and you might need a tool to do it, but this is a 98 flat and it will use SSP burrs. Most of you people are gonna put SSP burrs in here. So I really just think this is such an awesome grinder um, for those of you who are drinking lighter roast coffees. I mean, this here is, is good, but this is obviously a little bit better. It is also uh, basically $1,000 more, so uh, it better be better. Um, but what's really awesome about the P100 is that it's just, easy to use. Uh, when you put the beans in, you don't have to worry about stalling, of course, depending on RPMs and burrs and all of that. But generally speaking, I don't think you ever have to worry about the grinder ever stalling. You don't have to worry about retention. You don't have to worry about anything ever going wrong. And that's what it should be when you're spending this amount of money on a coffee grinder. And there are some slight things that annoy me about the P100. You're really nitpicking at this point. But um, what I really like about this is it gives you kind of the easiest way to play with 98 millimeter flats. Uh, again, very similar to P64. Unscrew everything, you get access to the burrs. The burrs in here right now are the 98 millimeter high uniformity burrs from SSP. They're basically turned up versions of the 64 millimeter multi-purpose. They're definitely more detailed and clearer and just, you know, turned up version of these but they're high clarity. A lot of SSP burrs are going to be that higher clarity style of burr. Uh, although I have not tried low uniformity and ultra low fines yet, but I have heard low LU is probably one of the most better all-rounders, but generally speaking, a lot of these SSP burrs are going to be high clarity. So that's kind of the style of shot and the style of brew that you should be expecting. I know some of you do try pulling like traditional chocolatey styles of shots, with a P100, I don't think that's, you know, I don't, I think you're wasting the potential of this grinder, maybe. No, just kidding. But I really think this is such a great grinder for those of you who are getting into that big boy flat world and you want to just play around with all the different birds because there's so many birds to play around with. And it's, that's what makes 98 mil very fun. That's also what makes 64 mil fun. But 98 mil, everything is just a, a little bit better, I would say. And you definitely need to experience it yourself to, to judge that. But I really enjoy that a lot of those SSPs are actually very high clarity. And for me, I like the 98 high uniformity and you can find 98 HU for pretty cheap now. Uh, but what's really fun is actually 98 brew. And if I were to pick a, up a P100, I actually would pick 98 brew as they're clearer than HU. They offer such a crazy, crazy presentation. This is a grinder that is, you know, I made a video about this grinder already, but Again, like there, I'm running out of things to say about this grinder. Is like it's just easy. You know, all these grinders are so easy. This one is definitely the most straightforward. Uh, I'll grind some coffee and then I'll tell you about some little slight annoyances that I have. I have like two annoyances with this grinder. It's like very, very uh, nitpicky here. But what's awesome about 98HU is uh, that the grounds are super fluffy. You know, if you wanted 
to, to do if you know if you care about how fluffy your grounds are the grounds are super fluffy out of this but this grinder grinds real fast and of course it depends on what rpm you have so to uh, reiterate we have two actual buttons here on the side we have just a normal on off and we can vary the rpm from here to here so we can definitely vary the rpm Ooh. Super fun, and then when you turn it off, it instantly becomes quiet. And then we have this other on-off, which is going to be, I would say, a cold starting, and you don't have to worry about stalling, is you put the beans in, and then you press the button, and it'll start, and then it'll auto RPM ramp. So that is, uh, I believe, 1700 RPM, and the max here will be about 1500 RPM. So, you know, slight annoyance here is that it is kind of the same dial here where I, I don't know what the numbers mean, although there is a chart that tells me what the RPMs are, but, uh, you know, it's not marked on here. It's like one to nine. What does that mean, right? We are at a espresso grind right now. Put the beans in. With HUs, with these uh, bigger flats, I definitely would recommend, especially 98 HU, I'd recommend two sprays of uh, for RDT, but here we go. That was 10 grams, by the way. That's, that's done. And I'm not even running it, I'm running it at like a four here. Uh, it could go even faster if I wanted to actually do that. Uh, but you do that, and then you do the knocker, and uh, yeah, I mean, you stick your portafilter in here and, and there you go. That's the workflow. It's so easy. One thing to note about adjusting this for filter, and this is kind of the only other annoyance I have with the P100, is that uh, this kind of zero point, you can, you can literally adjust the zero point because it's like a piece of metal that you can move back and forth. Uh, as we've seen, people are already taping this down. They're adding different um, markings here on the side. Check out my friend uh, Jay Kim's video about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, aside from that, this is such an easy grinder to use. You might want to run two stickers on here, one for your espresso, one for your uh, filter brewing. Uh, but yeah, it's super straightforward. So this is filter. It's gonna be even faster. Yeah, that's that's just it's it's awesome. It's super fast. I mean, there I didn't RDT it as well as I, I should have, so we did see a little bit of, of chaff out there. But yeah, I mean, like you really aren't getting any sort of grounds up there. Like you're getting a little bit of stuff up here, but it's so negligible that I, I don't really think any of you guys would care. Plus, I would say that this grinder is relatively quiet for uh, what it actually offers. I was looking for a grinder to just that single 98 mil flat that I wanted to just get to, to play with all the different burrs. I actually think this one is, is a very fantastic choice uh, because it's just an all-in-one contained unit. There's no power box on the side. And also it just grinds insanely fast. The workflow is super easy to use. And I, I just like, this is just, it's it. it. This is so good to use. And you know, it just, it's just like super easy to live with. And, and that's like what we like. Aside from some slight things, just like, I don't know what these numbers mean. And this is a little bit annoying at times. I don't really like, I'm running out of things to nitpick this, this grinder about. Um, I really am seriously nitpicking there. Um, I don't think any of you would care too much about these types of things, but um, it's, it's so easy to use. I love this grinder. Uh, I unfortunately have other 98 mil flats. I actually think the burrs I would pick for this would be the 98 brews. Basically a lot of those SSP burrs are very clarity driven and, and it's awesome, but we kind of get very similar, I would say like for example, the SSP cast, uh, HU, uh, those are the two that I think are, they're like similar, but different. They're very, very similar. Um, they're already going to be insanely clear, like much clearer than these. Uh, but the brew is, in my opinion, just like that, that notch up there. And, you know, it's just like a little bit more different, a little more different than uh, these birds, which are already super fantastic. I mean, HU, cast, so, so good already. Uh, brew is just that notch a little bit above them. Uh, you do sacrifice on the linger and the body and uh, the finish and all of that, but you get that additional tick of clarity, and I think that is so, so fun. You know, 98 is such a cool place to, to explore, and the P100 makes your life very, very, very easy to uh, have fun with the 98 mil world. So let's wrap up, talk about some use cases. 
why would you probably want to own all three? So this here is, again, such an awesome travel grinder, very convenient grinder, really awesome entry-level grinder. And for those of you who already own something like this, I think you've probably already seen a use case for something like this here, which is, this is going to be such a great grinder to do, I would say, more traditional styles of shots, especially with the obsidian burrs. And, uh, you know, bring it around, bring it to your friends. If you want to share the wonderful world of high-end coffee with people, this is going to just be such a great grinder to do that with. And it's so compact, so easy. P64. Awesome grinder for those of you who are looking for the easiest experience in the 64 millimeter world. It's quiet, it doesn't require modifications, it has such a great workflow to it. I mean, just living with this grinder is so, so easy. And of course, we have so many different options in the 64 millimeter burr world. And there's another one coming out for the uh, P64. And then of course we have the P100, which is uh, everything that this has, but definitely turned up a another notch. And that's just because we're running those 98 mil flats. Generally, you're probably gonna be running those SSP 98 flats, which is going to be so, so clear. And this is going to be that grinder that is just super easy to work with. I mean, when you look at what else has 98 mil flats, this is going to just kind of blow everything else out of the water when it comes to quality of life. And of course you're using some awesome SSP burrs in it. And, and it's just such an easy grinder to live with. So, I mean, all of these grinders are very easy to live with. So let me also do some recommendations on, you know, pairing these together, right? I think most realistically, this is what's going to be the combo that is makes the most sense for folks is get a grinder that does very traditional styles of shots, you know, your conical style of thing. Uh, and then pair it with something that could be drastically different, something like SSP multi-purpose burrs, or even the Cast Lab Sweet burrs in here would be just a really great pairing with either of the conicals in here. I also think this is a fantastic pairing here. This is gonna be insanely different in how it presents coffee to this. And I actually have been using that type of this combo a lot is give me super clear shots, super clear filter, and then give me a nice more, I'd say more comforting, more less painful experience in cup, potentially depending on what coffee you're using in here. And have this set to like your darker roast coffees, uh, your decaf, and then you have this set up for what you're drinking, you know, special coffees and all of that. And I would recommend you pick maybe more special burr like 98 brew. So this is a combo worth mentioning. Now you may be wondering what about all three? My specific case of like, yeah, I've been using all three. What do I, what do, I do with all three? So uh, this one I bring around to places and I use the moonshines for sharing and it's super convenient for travel. This here, if I were to pick what burr set to put in it, I would actually put Cast Lab Sweet burrs in here. The Cast Lab Sweet, I think, is definitely that daily drinker burr set that would, it's just awesome. It's really such a daily drinker burr set. Uh, works with such a variety of coffees and different roast levels as well. And then I would pick the 98 Brew in here. And this would be my, you know, fun manual sports car that I take out uh, on the weekends. And this would give me that crazy different experience in cup to both of these. And uh, this would give me just options day to day. This would be that fun setup that I would use. Oh, and then if you were to do this, Cast Lab Suite 98 Brew cover everything right there. You know, overall, what's awesome about these Option O grinders is that there's a huge focus of making the grinder as usable as possible, of course, lovely design, but also offer a very great cup, a uh, high performance here. We get, you know, very, very high performance here out of all of these. And we don't really sacrifice much in terms of livability and usability with these grinders. And then that's like the awesome thing. You know, I will say you are paying a premium for it. and. One, yeah, you're paying the premium for the actual design, the performance, the all of that. But I would make the argument that you're also paying for the customer service. The people at this company actually care about you and they're constantly improving. I mean, we see different designs, some I agree with, some I don't, of making these a bit better. And, and actually we've seen so many awesome upgrades in something like the Laga Mini. The fact that we even have a different burst set, the fact that we have fixed stalling in here is awesome community feedback, they've listened to it on the P64. Uh, this thing, I'm curious what they're gonna do next to the P100, uh, but it's just like, you can confidently buy these grinders now. I remember back when they talked about the P64, when they announced the P64, so many people were skeptical. So many people were just like, they didn't, they didn't think 
it could become something like this. And we look at it now and it's just, this is, it's, it's, you can't go wrong with buying these grinders. And that's why I like Optional grinders. That is the Optional Lagum family of grinders. Uh, these are just awesome. And I would highly recommend you consider each of these grinders for what they offer. Uh, I will have dedicated videos for these two finally coming out at some point. Uh, it has taken me a while. I'm busy. I'm sorry. But uh, these are just, they're, they're so good. Um, and I like each of them for specific reasons. But if you have the uh, opportunity to try these grinders out or if you have the opportunity to actually purchase all of these uh, this is you can't go wrong with it I mean you really can't go wrong with these grinders and that's something that uh, I feel very confident in saying that's the family of option O grinders they're awesome thank you so much for spending the time to watch the video if you have any questions let me know but otherwise I will see you guys around